What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. Today we've got an exciting one. This is a video in which I've partnered with an app that you may or may not have heard before called Anima. So Anima allows you to take designs that you've created, user interface designs, in Adobe XD Sketch or Figma. In our case, we're going to be working with Figma to demonstrate this. And it will take all of your mobile layouts, your variation of your page, and with just a few clicks, it will export them to the Anima interface where it produces developer-friendly code that is responsive. And it allows you to export it literally in HTML, CSS, React, or even a view project. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to do that. Check the very top link here in the YouTube description to check out Anima. And now let's get started. All right, so here's the project that I have set up. And as we see, we have eight different artboards. Um, these four up here uh, are really similar to these four. The only difference is, is that we, we uh, have these results section right here, which you don't see up here. So the intention that we're going to work with is that people can click over here in this text field enter a name, then hit find them, and it will show the results here respectively in the different viewports here. So right now, nothing is uh, attached to Anima that hasn't been used yet. And also the way I designed this, I designed this and structured the layer, lay, layers exactly how I normally would. There's no special things that you need to consider uh, when you're like, when it comes to like naming and grouping layers, it'll still work. And one thing that you do want to pay attention to is constraints. Um, for instance, like this little icon up here, you know, the intention here would be that uh, if a person like changed the size of their, uh, their, their browser window, that this should stay right here. And as you can see with the little dashes, we're using constraints right here, uh, right in top. So uh, that's really important. And I'll show you how to enable that so that when Anima takes this and converts it to code, it knows exactly, you know, what should be sticking to, you know, where essentially. So the way we get started is we're going to select all these uh, frames right here. And we're gonna right click and go to plugins and then click on Anima. So of course you'll wanna make sure you install the Anima plugin first, and then also log into your account and you, you'll see this. So we have a couple tabs up here, uh, responsive, and get code. We wanna to go to responsive right now with all of these selected. And we're gonna click on first use Figma constraints like I was just talking about because it will mind those, it will pay attention to those. And then also breakpoints. All right, so it's detected these four different uh, breakpoints right here at desktop now, large tablet, small tablet, and phone. That's these four respectively. And then we're just gonna hit save. All right, so now what we can do is we can preview this in the browser and so it's going to process everything and there it is <laughs> it's already converted it to code so if we click on these little uh, mobile icons up here it'll show you how it looks and behaves all right so right now you can't yet use this or click or and submit this yet but you certainly uh, we're going to we're going to set that up here real soon so I, we can also click on sync to project here. And of course, we haven't yet attached it to a project. So we're gonna click create new, and I'll just call it switcheroo, which is the fictional name of this little medical record search app. And there we go, we're gonna click on sync. And over here, you can see it's uploading the files. And this goes quite quick. Of course, if you have more artboards and stuff like that, it's gonna take a little bit more time. But once we do this, there we go. So now we're at, we're in, we're in an actual browser. We're not in Figma anymore, but we're in the projects.anima.com uh, section. And we can see that I, we have our, our same, pretty much a, a very similar area where we can view the design. Now, what you can also do is just click on responsive. And remember I talked about the constraints and knowing where to position the elements. We can move things in and there we go. Now look at that, very, very cool. All right, so let's see what else we can do because clearly there's a lot more that we can do here. So um, what we're gonna do is, I'll just show you some basic uh, interactivity that you can um, integrate. So for instance, like this, uh, this button right here, let's say for instance, we wanted it to grow upon hover or something like that. So we can select it and then we'll go to our Anima app right here. And you can see we have all these um, options right here. 
hover effects, entrance animation, media, uh, where you can actually embed uh, Lottie and GIFs and video, um, embed code, text inputs, uh, we can make a submit button, which we'll do, a parallax scroll even. So let's just click a plus on hover effects. And here you can see it's it shows what we currently selected. Um, we can make it grow, we can make it shrink, we can give it a shadow. Uh, let's just do grow for the fun of it. It allows you to specify easing types. Um, we can just do ease in, and then a duration, 0.2, and then it also also show you the associated CSS uh, code for this. So 1.1, let's just hit save. And now, if we go ahead and preview this in the browser, look at that. It just works automatically. And this, is all, by the way, is all in code, uh, just like you, you would expect it to be. Uh, very impressive. Now let's go ahead and close this out. Now of course, uh, you're gonna want to replicate this in any other uh, buttons for your other viewports as well. All right, so let's say for instance, we want this text field to actually function as a text field. So what we'll do is we're gonna click on the actual text uh, layer right here that says Gary Simon. And if we choose, I, I just hit plus on that, uh, this text input. I notice it says uh, select text input type. It's gonna be, in this case, it's just gonna be text because it's just a name that we're looking for. Although if you had an email um, or password or number, you can set that type there. Um, placeholder, Gary Simon, and set as required uh, field, hit save. All right, so now we can see we can uh, edit that. And of course, you wanna write, make sure you replicate this across the other ones as well. And now what we can do is I also make it submit. So if we click on our find then button, you can see we have our hover effects already added from previously, and we can choose submit button. All right, so this is really cool, this part right here. Um, let me push it over here so we can kind of see it. So when a user submits this form, we can email the user responses to a specific email address. So I can put in um, Gary at, uh, I think we'll just do contact at designcourse.com. You can also optionally save to a downloadable spreadsheet. And then also on success, go to what well, we're gonna choose, the name of this artboard down here. Design, or it says desktop submitted. All right, so on success, go to uh, desktop submitted and also on failure, you could make it go to like a failure design. Uh, we're just gonna do the same one right here and hit save. So we'll select all of these and we'll right click and go to our Anima app and then preview in browser. And at this point, we'll select the right artboard and then we'll put in a name. As you can see, it's uh, an actual text field that we can type in. So I'll just put in John Doe. We'll click find them and there we go. It goes to, uh, it shows basically the, the results right here. And what's really cool is because we had to email us, it will also dispatch an email with the entered value of John Doe. Now there's also some other cool stuff that you can do. Let's say for instance, we want this whole section right here to kind of just uh, fall in from the side. So we can take this, go back to our Anima app and we can choose in entrance animation and you can make it move left, move right I uh, let's select that. We have all of our options. I'll just leave these as the default options. We'll hit save and we'll make sure we select all of our artboards. Hit preview in browser and it'll load once again. And we're gonna make sure we go to desktop new. You'll see it come in and look at that. It kind of just uh, animated right in. So as you can see, there's a bunch of cool stuff that you can do within the actual Anima plugin in Figma. And um, when you have all that ready to rock, and you can go back to your actual projects here, and there's a lot of other stuff that you can do, which is very, very cool. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we can see that we have our access to our screen section here. Uh, we also have a component section as well. So what we'll do is click on one of these, and you'll see that Let's get this in mobile. And you'll see that we have an option right here, export code. All right, so you have multiple options. You can export the code 
um, in which case it'll have uh, HTML, CSS, all that stuff worked up for you as a zip file. Let's make this a little bit larger. Um, you can also choose inspect code option right here, which is best for developers that want to use the code as a starting point instead of writing from scratch. So it's gonna have a lot of the boilerplate already ready to rock for you. And then there's also a code sandbox option down here. Um, you could choose just pure HTML or you can even choose React or Vue as well. I, as you can see, even SAS, uh, it'll have everything ready to rock for you uh, with SAS, uh, the preprocessor. So very, very, very cool. So um, I'm curious just to check this out as well myself. So if we choose Vue, plain CSS, we can hit export. And here we go. Here is the Vue project opened up here in Visual Studio Code. I exported uh, what it downloaded. And then in the terminal, I ran npm install and then npm run start which starts and serves the server. And this is essentially what we have here, exactly pretty much what we created in Figma. Um, so pretty much pixel for pixel perfect. It may not be 100% you know, by the pixel perfect, but it is very, very close. So um, if you set up your constraints right, it will, um, you know, using Flexbox, it will make things expand. Um, if you do want, all full, you know, all of your different responsive artboards. Um, right now, you would have to export it with the HTML option and not just the view option or React. Now, also back on the Anima interface, you can also click the code tab and view the code without exporting. For instance, if we select certain elements that I are a part of our design, I right now we have this in view, but of course we can also switch this to React. And it's gonna show you all the view component logic right here. Look how awesome that is. So everything's just automatically created every time we uh, end up changing things. And also we can see in this column, we have a CSS. Also notice for instance, under our SAS or our CSS, we have a Flexbox that is being used, which is obviously, in many ways far superior than just using CSS absolute positioning. Um, additionally, we have a style guide tab over here, and this provides you with, in the case of if you're using SAS, uh, SAS properties, and if you're just using CSS, it will provide you with CSS custom properties, which essentially will do the same thing. And this allows you to quickly and easily change uh, the different styles that are associated with your given layout or app. Additionally, we can come over here, and if we come to the comment section, you can add specific comments uh, to right here. And then that way, uh, any other developers or designers, uh, you can confer on different areas. Here's a comment. And there we go. So now every any team members who are part of this can now uh, be able to communicate with each other essentially. Additionally, we come over here to this share. Of course, you can invite a uh, team by individuals who can now access this project and then begin essentially to start uh, to real quickly be able to pick apart the design and gain access through the code section, um, all of this boilerplate code and it's all done automatic. Very, very awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. It's an extremely powerful app, obviously, something that people ask me about frequently, how can we take our designs and is there any way to just export the code? Well, here you go with Anima. So as always, make sure to subscribe, check out Anima again in the very top link here of the YouTube description, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.